This is going to be a quick buyer's guide video for anyone interested in the 2013 to 2022 Range Rover, the full size model, the L405. This video is also going to be made primarily for the United States market, but I'm sure this information can still help anyone else in other countries uh, that are interested. And I wanted to make this video because this is a company that makes some really incredible products very satisfactory to drive however with a lot of people they have experienced nightmares owning this car and i just want to cover some resources that you as the consumer can use when you go to do research on these used vehicles but a quick overview of the l405 full-size range rovers These products, they initially got released as a 2013 model year in the United States. This was the first SUV in the world to use an all aluminum unibody structure. That was the big deal and the big highlight here. This saved over 700 pounds compared to the previous generation full-size Rover that this was replacing. That's 39% lighter. And there was a whole multitude of engines uh, that these vehicles came with when they First launched in the United States, it came with a naturally aspirated 5 liter V8 pushing out 375 horsepower and 375 pounds feet of torque. And then you had the supercharged 5 liter V8 pushing out 510 horsepower and 461 pounds feet of torque. This is the engine to get even in the used market in my opinion, and I'll talk more about that throughout the video. And pretty much all these engines, they were mated to the eight-speed automatic transmission, supercharged versions of the V8. They got 13 MPG in the city, 19 on the highway. Other engines and models got slightly better, but for the most part, MPG has been abysmal. But you should already know that with these massive uh, SUV products, that should not come to you as a surprise. But later on in 2014, they dropped the naturally aspirated V8 and they introduced a supercharged V6. And then throughout the years, they then ditched the uh, three liter supercharged V6 for a inline six turbo engine that was in 2020. And then they also introduced a plug-in hybrid. But in my opinion, I think going with the supercharged V8 in the pre-owned market is the best way to go. The reason for that is because this is the special engine, okay? With the latest brand new 2023 Rovers, the full size ones, they are offering a twin turbo V8 that's basically from the BMW products. The supercharged motor had all the charisma and the character and you have to purchase a new Defender essentially. That's the only vehicle Range Rover product that comes with the five liter V8 now supercharged. And I would also suggest going with the long wheelbase version of this product because in general, when I've tested these Range Rovers of this era, the ride quality was always a little choppy. Of course, these products typically came with very large wheels, 21, 22 inch wheels, things of that nature. So the long wheelbase is going to help with the ride quality and also with the high speed stability out on the highway. Also, the rear seating space is rather cramped for this massive SUV. Same thing with the Sport. Uh, other models tend to do pretty well when it comes to interior space, like even the Velar or uh, the, the Land Rovers, right? The Discoveries, the Defenders. But for whatever reason, the full-size Rover, standard wheelbase in the Range Rover Sport, not very spacious in the second row. But you can fix that when you go with the long wheelbase version. I'll talk more about pricing towards the end of the video, but another thing I wanna let you know is this will also be the best value in the used car market because the original MSRP of one of these long wheelbase, five liter supercharged V8 Range Rovers, the L405s, it was around $120,000. Nowadays, they're around 65 to $70,000 with around 40 to 50,000 miles in 2019 model years. A supercharged Range Rover Sport is a smaller product and sits below this, and that will also go for around $60,000 in the used car market. But the original MSRP of one of those 
sport models with the V8 supercharged, that was around $90,000, $95,000. So a significantly um, lower MSRP vehicle to start out with. That's why I think going with the full size extended wheelbase, that's your best bang for the buck in the used car market, especially certified pre-owned. Anyway, I'll talk more about that towards the end. Now let's get into some of the problems with this vehicle. Any used car that you are curious about, just hop on Google, type in the vehicle that you're interested in. For instance, uh, we're looking at this Range Rover here, just type in Range Rover TSBS. That stands for Technical Service Bulletins, okay? So TSBs, that's what you want to look out for with any car that you are interested in. Why? Because Technical Service Bulletins is the information that the manufacturer shares with the dealerships in regards to common issues that they find with these products, uh, both from the consumer, from dealerships, or from the manufacturer themselves. And then the company will compile all this information and then they will send out a TSB to the dealerships. And in this, they will share uh, the best way of fixing said problems. And this is something that is made public. You can find this on Google. Uh, you just go to a website like nhtsa.gov and then you can just enter in the model year and the model of the vehicle that you want to research and it'll pop up with all of the recalls any current investigations and of course the tsbs however they have that hidden here as manufacturers communications same thing it's a tsb All right, and how does a TSB differ from a recall? Well, a recall is something that if that issue arises, it can cause serious injury or potentially lead to death. So a recall is something that, you know, a company is gonna issue that out and dealerships are gonna fix that for you for free. Okay, like the airbag issues, okay, pretty much every vehicle has had airbag issues. That's a recall. That's going to affect your life, right? Uh, but a TSB, it's more so just annoyances and issues. A lot of it electrical, a lot of it can be transmissions, shuddering, or most commonly with a lot of vehicles, suspension annoyances, clunks and bangs and squeaks, you know, annoying things like that. That's mostly what a TSB is. And it can really range in severity, a TSB. It can be something as major as, you know, engines misfiring to something on the low end like you know, manufacturer decides they want to change the wording in a service manual. You get the idea. And TSBs are going to be covered for free when you're typically under warranty. If you're out of warranty, well, you're SOL. You're gonna to have to shell out the money yourself to have these things fixed. That's why it is imperative that you purchase vehicles that are under warranty, like a new leased car or a certified pre-owned car. I'll talk more about that later. But you just come on to the nhtsa.gov website, you enter in, for instance, 2019 uh, Range Rover, okay? And you select the full-size Rover from the drop-down, and you are gonna be presented with 547 manufacturer communications. So 547 TSBs. Keep in mind, a lot of this, there's gonna be redundancies, okay? The same thing being listed over and over again. And there's also gonna be some minor things, like I mentioned, you know, the wording of a service manual needing to be changed, right? But as we can see here, electrical system issues, that's the, the main problems here with these uh, 2019 Range Rovers. I just chose 2019 as the model year because most of the certified pre-owned models that you're gonna be finding they're gonna be around the 2019 model year. And 2019 seems to be the model that's the most ironed out, has the least amount of TSBs and uh, noted issues. But even with this 2019, we have the DC converter squeaking noise from the uh, inside of the cabin. We also have powertrain issues like the engine stumbles and misfires and rough running at idle. So you also have uh, equipment issues and equipment can be a, a variety of things, but in this case, you know, the tailgate won't close properly. And uh, another thing I noticed with a lot of these Range Rover products, it's the uh, the door latch 
doors not latching properly. I believe that was a recall actually, I'll check that uh, in a bit, but the rear differential, knocking noises and juddering and vibrations. The oil level gauge not showing the correct uh, oil levels, right, with the dipstick. That was a TSB. I mean, just all sorts of, I mean, we, we would be here until the end of time if we sat through and read all of these TSBs, especially with a lot of the redundancy here. I mean, it says 547. I feel like it's closer to 200 maybe. But the main things that plague, not just Range Rover, but a lot of flagship luxury products it's going to be suspension, suspension clunks, suspension squeaks, rattles, things of this nature. This is ongoing with literally every car. Sorry, not just luxury cars, but even things like Toyota Camrys, right? You look at the TSBs for a Toyota Camry, there's like 200, 400, even 700 TSBs for like 2013 model years. You know what I mean? Just about every car is affected. And the main thing I want to bring to your attention when I show you these TSBs is there's too much to count. There's too much to go through. What should this tell you? Okay, there's a lot of people who comment on my videos and other people's videos and saying, is this car reliable? Should I buy this car? If I buy it, what could go wrong? Well, according to this, like over 500 things. And it's like this with literally every car you search. Lexus, Toyota, Nissan, Mercedes, Range Rover, it does not matter. They are riddled with these things. With the Range Rovers especially, yeah, the air ride suspension, that tends to crap out on people. And also the various electronic gremlins. For instance, the digital gauge cluster, that'll just go blank on a, on a Range Rover. Okay, that was one of the TSBs. And, um, you know, that's annoying. That, that sucks, don't get me wrong. But it's like this with pretty much every modern day car rolling on the road. Even the very humble Camry, you know, even that has a lot of TSBs associated with it, some of which can be like suspension, you know, squeaks and clunking noises, things of that nature. But the difference is with like a Toyota, you can, you know, spend 200 bucks and replace all of the struts on it. You know what I mean? That's the main difference there. Whereas these Range Rovers with a lot of air suspension type vehicles, it doesn't matter who makes them, Lexus, Ram 1500, these Range Rovers, S-Classes, they're very expensive, they leak, it's annoying. And depending on the brand, I mean, it can be as high as, you know, two, three grand for one strut. So when you ask things like, is this car reliable? Like what, what's going to go wrong with it? Like, dude, it's over 500 things, at least over 200 things. You have to assume at least like five of these things will go wrong with you if you decide to own one of these cars. If you buy something like this or any other flagship luxury product without a warranty, you are completely SOL. That's why it is imperative that you purchase something like this certified pre-owned. Why? Because there's a couple of benefits when you do that. One, the vehicle will have some of its factory warranty left over, and if it doesn't, the certified pre-owned warranty will take over. And what is that CPO warranty? It's one year unlimited miles or two years, 100,000 miles, whichever comes first. So essentially you get two years, 100,000 miles of warranty coverage. Range Rover dealership is gonna have the proper documentation with it, you know, the uh, the proper Carfax, the original MSRP pricing, the sticker, and the uh, all the options that came with the vehicle, your warranty documentation is gonna come with all of that. It's gonna give you a little packet of information for you to look over so you know you're covered, you know exactly what is covered. Obviously, maintenance items are not included like brakes and things of that nature, but all of the electronic gremlins that keep popping up, powertrain issues, uh, some of the suspension components, right? Like the, uh, the the air suspension, if that keeps crapping out, well, they'll keep replacing it uh, as long as you're under this warranty. So you essentially have the two years, 100,000 miles. And once that warranty expires, you can pay to you know have that extended, right? The, the service department will be more than happy to sell you a, a continuation of that warranty if you decide to own these Range Rover products. But that brings me to the, the pricing of these vehicles in the used car market currently. I'm recording this video June of 2023 and car prices are still nuts. You know, these are still overpriced vehicles. Just about every used car is overpriced. And that's why in my opinion, for most people, I just think you might be better off purchasing a brand new 
uh, Land Rover Discovery or Land Rover Defender at $80,000 because supercharged Range Rovers, the full size ones, extended wheelbase, original MSRP, $120,000 things of that nature. 2018s, 2019s, it's ranging anywhere between 60 and $70,000. Same thing with the Range Rover Sport models, as I already discussed. A Range Rover Sport, the original MSRP, for the most part, was around eighty-five dollars to $95,000. So when you pay 60 k for a Range Rover Sport like that, you're getting a very minimal discount over the original MSRP. Not to mention, the person who bought that 2019 Range Rover Sport for 95 grand probably didn't pay 95 grand. This was pre-pandemic. So back then they, there was incentives, there were dealer discounts. Who knows, maybe you got 10% off MSRP on that sport. And maybe there were some loyalty or conquest incentives on top of that, maybe two grand for a, for a loyalty discount. You know what I mean? On top of the 10% off, he probably got over 10 Gs off of that Range Rover Sport. So he was paying like you know seventy five eighty five thousand dollars and you come you pick it up at sixty grand there is no incentives uh, for a used Range Rover that's only for new cars if that makes sense let me know in the comment section if it doesn't I'll try to explain it to you more but that's why I'm saying if you have to have a pre-owned vehicle make sure it's certified pre-owned by Range Rover and buy that full-size Rover 120 grand you buy that for sixty seventy thousand dollars you're getting a better you know, quote unquote deal, right? You're getting more car for your money, right? But you will also run into these other vehicles that are not certified pre-owned, but they're still really nice. For instance, this 2021 uh, Range Rover P525 HSE Westminster Edition. It's a nice car. It's going for $81,000, which is 10 grand below uh, market price. It's only got 14,000 miles on it. It's got some curved wheels on it, but what are you gonna do? Uh, but this is not a CPO car, but it's still really nice. Uh, it's located where? At this uh, Volvo dealership. A quick heads up for anyone shopping for Range Rovers on these used car websites like CarGurus here, or any website for that matter. This very nice 2021 Westminster Range Rover that we looked at uh, at $81,000. It's apparently $10,000 below market. Well, read very carefully the dealer's description because in this dealer description, when you scroll down, it says this vehicle is the three liter inline six model, not the five liter supercharged V8. When you scroll up top, it says that the vehicle is a P525 supercharged V8 model. And then you scroll down into the dealer description, it says that it's an inline six. Also, when you click on their website, and it takes you to the listing on their site, it does indeed confirm that this vehicle is an inline six. Be very careful when you see a deal that's too good to be true, like in this case, this particular model, it's a Westminster on Car Gurus. it's a great deal at 10 grand below market price. A lot of these uh, great deals, when I click on the listing and I actually read through the description, they end up being inline six models but they front these vehicles like they're V8s just so they can get that good ranking on CarGurus or any of these other used car websites. You understand? So I just wanted to help buyers be aware when you're shopping, double check and confirm if the vehicle that you're looking at is truly a V8 model or not. Now, when you buy from a Volvo dealership, a Mercedes, a Jeep dealership, Nissan dealership, whatever, their service departments, their finance department, I'm sorry, will sell you a warranty, a legitimate one that'll cover you, but it's not baked into the price of the vehicle. You know, that warranty can cost three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000. Whereas you buy a CPO model uh, that's at a great deal, according to CarGurus, you don't have to pay extra for any warranties. It's already baked into the price of that CPO car and you shop for a great deal, then cool. But here you potentially have to pay up for a warranty, but this is 2021, it's only two years old. There should still be some factory warranty left and it should get passed on to you, but I'm personally not super aware of how that works out. Someone in the comment section, if you work at a dealership or you know how this works, let us know in the comment section, would this 2021 Range Rover, will the uh, original factory 
warranty get passed down to the second owner? Because in my understanding, this dealership, this Volvo dealership purchased the car. Now they are the owner. So, you know, that warranty would have been transferred to this dealership and this dealership is now gonna sell it to you. I feel like that warranty will not transfer to you now. Like it doesn't transfer to the third person, but I'm not entirely sure how that works. Complicated stuff, not everyone's gonna get that, but for the people who do get it, let me know in the comment section. If anyone's confused, I'll try to explain it to you after I get some answers on that. But best thing to do, buy it CPO'd so there's no questions, and they'll do their 165 checkpoint analysis of the car take that for whatever it's worth, but there is documentation that they did it and they looked over the vehicle, so it should be good. And it shouldn't give you too many issues for the two, three years you decide to own the car certified. But hopefully you understand why I don't like broad questions like, is this car reliable? Because that is literally impossible to answer. Uh, but one of your best answers is going to be looking at the TSBs for the specific vehicle that you are interested in. And also checking up on the forums because I will say this as well, just to make the forum people happy, there are plenty of people that will own Range Rover products and have no issues with them. Like it'll work perfectly for them. I've seen people in the forum say, well, I've, this is my third Range Rover and I've never had an issue with these vehicles. And they're like, I'm not sure where this stigma came from that Range Rovers are unreliable. I've had five of them and they've been perfect for me. Plenty of stories like that. Does that mean you should be stupid and not cover yourself? Of course not, because as you can see, there's plenty of people who have had issues and there's the manufacturer themselves telling you that there's over two, three, four hundred issues with their own product. With a car in particular, something that has so many moving parts, components, electronics, sensors, air suspension, you should just have the mentality if it can go wrong, it will go wrong and just be smart, intelligent and just pay up for the warranty or buy the vehicle that's certified pre-owned to begin with and you don't have to worry about anything. If you just happen to find the perfect Range Rover and the perfect spec that you like at some other dealership, cool, buy their warranty, make sure it's prorated, meaning that you can get a portion of the warranty refunded back to you when you sell early. You, know, you get a four year warranty, you only use two years of it, you can get two years uh, refunded back to you if you happen to sell the car in two years, if that makes sense. So just make sure you cover yourself with these flagship luxury products. If you want my personal testimony, I have had issues with these Range Rovers when I've tested brand new ones. A Range Rover Defender that I tested last year, 2022, no miles on it. That vehicle literally stopped at a red light. It just stopped functioning, just completely shut down on me. And um, thankfully I was at a red light, so it wasn't a big deal. I just turned the car back on. And the car never did that issue again. Had a Jaguar F-Pace, it's a different vehicle, but I remember that car had issues going into reverse once. I had to turn the vehicle off, turn it back on, and then the vehicle went into reverse. Uh, same F-Pace, the passenger side electronic seat would not go forward and back for whatever reason. So you have these electronic gremlins, but that plagues every new modern car. Every modern day vehicle has the same electronics, the same sensors, the same infotainment, CPUs controlling things. So asking broad questions like, is this car reliable is not very helpful to you or me, quite frankly. So the best advice I can give you, buy CPO, buy a warranty. And hopefully these resources were helpful to you. You know, you can use these government websites if you're not in the United States. I'm sure other countries have something similar to this. You know, you can also just Google Range Rover TSBS and uh, this website pops up LandRoverProblems.com. You can scroll down, uh, select the vehicle that you're interested in. It kind of gives you a bar graph of the various model years and the various TSBs. Keep in mind, the more you go back into the archives, like early 2000s vehicles, there's not much information or data about those cars. So there's not many TSBs to report or to see. Uh, this primarily works with newer vehicles like what I'm showing you here with this L405 Range Rover. And as you can see, the early model years, 2013, 2014, had the most amount of TSBs. And when you click on this, open a new tab, 
It takes you to carcomplaints.com, another great resource, and it compiles all of the uh, TSBs, the recalls, crash test information, common complaints for you. And when you go to the recall section, that's when you see uh, the, the door latch issues. That was a major recall for these Range Rovers. Carcomplaints.com, the, their website is a little wonky. It doesn't work properly. And when you go to the TSBs section, it's got like 1600, you know, it's kind of overkill. There's a lot of redundancy being reported here, but regardless, carcomplaints.com still a good resource does a great job of compiling information so hopefully this was valuable to you if it was comment down below like and subscribe and check out my next video on the end screen here click on it and i will see you there